Hi everyone, I'm Coral Azus. New developments between old rivals headline today's edition of CNN 10. Those rivals are North Korea and the United States. They fought on opposite sides of the Korean War in the early 1950s, and though that fighting stopped in 1953, the U.S. has remained an ally of South Korea and an enemy of North Korea. Usually when the U.S. has a new president, like it does now, North Korea tries to test the American administration. It might launch a new missile into the sea. It might announce new developments in its nuclear weapons program. The communist Asian country sees that program as its right. The U.S. and several other members of the United Nations see that program as illegal. They put sanctions, penalties on North Korea's economy to pressure it to give up its nuclear program. American presidential administrations have also spoken out against North Korea. They've tried to further isolate the communist country. They've tried direct diplomacy with it. But so far, nothing has stopped North Korea's nuclear program. And now, new satellite images show the country has been making moves around a facility that America believes is used to store nuclear weapons. Experts say it looks like a new building has appeared at the facility, right at the spot where two underground tunnels lead to it. Researchers believe North Korea might be trying to hide its growing stockpile of weapons. So how does this impact the U.S. government? It hasn't announced its policy on North Korea yet. Sources say the Biden administration will do that when it's finished a review on what's going on with the communist country. But like his predecessors, President Joe Biden ultimately wants North Korea to give up its nuclear program. He says that program is a serious threat to international peace. And critics say if the president doesn't announce his policy and strategy soon, North Korea could start taking actions that make the situation more complicated and disarmament less likely. So there's some pressure on the U.S. government to address North Korea sooner rather than later. Isolated, sanctioned, and at war, North Korea is one of the world's few truly pariah states. Living largely cut off from the internet and global trade has come at a punishing cost for its people. But two things have made the secretive state's economic survival possible. Its efforts to be self-sustainable and the support of key allies. North Korea's tumultuous relationship with most of its neighbors and the U.S. has seen it bear the brunt of a long list of international sanctions. Some measures have aimed to cripple parts of the economy supporting the regime's nuclear missile program, wiping hundreds of millions of dollars from the country's annual income. Others have targeted regime officials for human rights violations. But North Korea has long worked to produce enough food and goods domestically to supply the country. Looking at the relatively middle-class lives on display in the showpiece capital Pyongyang, you might think that's been a success. But the capital is only home to around 3 million of the most privileged, most loyal citizens. For the other 20 million plus North Koreans living outside this city, poverty is the most common way of life, especially in the countryside. North Koreans often go without the basics, like clean water, medicine, and nutritious food. The country's economy is largely agrarian, and crop failures have led to mass food shortages and the need for UN emergency food aid. Internationally, North Korea's recent overtures for peace attracted attention, but it has been the communist regime's more hidden relationships that have reaped benefits for the North Korean elite. China has been North Korea's main trading partner. Coal, seafood, and agricultural products have all flowed from North Korea, while China has pumped Pyongyang with enough oil to fuel its industries. According to the U.S., Beijing's consistently poor enforcement of international sanctions has also provided an economic loophole for Pyongyang. Meanwhile, a black market in Korean goods blossomed thanks to the secretive nation's porous border with China, with profits believed to go to the North Korean regime. In 2017, following a string of North Korean nuclear tests, Beijing finally cut off Pyongyang's access to its financial system. Nevertheless, China remains a key intermediary between the Hermit Kingdom and the outside world. Russia also maintains relatively close ties with North Korea. It's rooted in their Cold War alliance. Both Russia and China have helped shield North Korea at the UN Security Council, repeatedly rebuffing US attempts to impose harsher sanctions. Both nations have also been home to North Korean companies and labor, with some workers in Russia working in conditions that the US State Department has described as slave-like labor. 
In 2019, the U.S. believed North Korea had some 100,000 citizens working abroad, mostly in Russia and China, sending huge amounts of money back home, much of it right into the coffers of the ruling Kim family. And until they were banned by new U.N. sanctions in 2017, foreign labor contracts were a vital source of foreign currency for the North Korean regime. The Kim family has managed to keep a tight grip on power for three generations, putting the survival of the regime above all else, including the North Korean people. Ten Second Trivia. The ancient Roman god of fire and metalworking had what name? Juno, Hephaestus, Mars, or Vulcan? Hephaestus was Greek, the ancient Roman god of fire was Vulcan. A lot of the Greco-Roman city of Pompeii is still covered in debris almost 2,000 years after Mount Vesuvius erupted and buried it. Its last breath from the year 79 AD has been incredibly well preserved under a thick layer of ash and dirt. Today, archaeologists continue to uncover remains of the ancient city. One of their latest finds is a type of chariot that's never been discovered in Italy before. It's a large four-wheeled chariot. It was made out of iron, bronze, tin, and wood, and some of the wood, along with the imprint of ropes, still remains. Not only is the thing remarkably intact, it somehow stayed that way despite the partial collapse of the porch it was housed in. Researchers say they've found vehicles, including chariots, in Pompeii before, but never one like this. A University of Massachusetts professor interviewed by National Public Radio described the find as a Lamborghini of the ancient world. The archaeological park of Pompeii thinks it was used for ceremonial purposes like parades, festivals, maybe weddings. It's been moved to a laboratory to get cleaned up, restored, and reconstructed. <laughs> Pizza and dessert is a very popular combo, unless you're counting carbs or sticking to a sort of paleo diet. And dessert pizzas are like two high calorie meals in one. They come in all kinds of combinations like chocolate chip cookie pizza, cinnamon roll pizza, or peanut butter cup pizza. But a restaurant in the U.S. state of Iowa has stirred curiosity, compliments, controversy, and criticism for a concoction with a cereal that dates back seven decades. It starts like any other pizza. But then things start to get a little loopy. There's a fruity delight in every bite of this. But is it a delight when it's Fruit Loops Pizza? Fong's Pizza in Des Moines, Iowa bills it as a breakfast and dessert pizza. The Fruit Loops obviously bring the sweetness and the crunch. But others call it a crime against humanity, an abomination to pizza everywhere. That looks like something you'd see on a New York City sidewalk after the St. Patrick's Day Parade. We've seemed to really make some people angry. As an Italian, I am formally declaring war on Iowa. Fong's Pizza actually dreamed up what they call Loopy Fruits Pizza six years ago. We're all sitting at a table and somebody goes, well, what about Fruit Loops? But it never quite took off. Now they're relaunching it using cream cheese, then the Fruit Loops, sprinkled with a bit of mozzarella, and drizzled with a sauce made from yogurt and sweet condensed milk. The color, the taste, the aroma. The infamy. The creators of Fruit Loops Pizza are basking in the attention. Fruit Loops may never replace pepperoni, but to its makers... It's quite delicious. But to an impartial reporter from Axios... It was all right. The... <laughs> It definitely reminded me of like when you were a kid and you just put like random things together. Like in the Princess Diaries when a pizza topped with M&M's arrived. For 19 bucks you can get a large Loopy Fruits pizza. I ate about one slice of it. Yeah, I gave it a good try. Health nuts won't go great nuts for that. But it is a golden crisp idea. Maybe another maker will add a little cat and crunch to their pizza, thanking their lucky charms that tricks aren't just for kids. Maybe Count Chocula himself will honeycomb the aisles, getting his kicks out of a recipe that smacks of Apple Jacks and snap crackle pops with Krispies. It's certainly food for thought. West Memphis, Arkansas is our last stop today. Want to give a shout out to the Black Knights of West Memphis Christian School. I'm Carl Azus for CNN.